Hey, my creative friends. In today's video, I have something quite special for you because I will be unboxing and reviewing two products today. The first one being this very heavy duty porcelain palette from Meaden. And in here, I will be unboxing and reviewing Paul Rubens Artist Watercolor 24 Tube Paints, which is artist grade, most of them single pigmented, and um, it's gonna be a real fun video, so let's dive right in. So the first one I wanna open was this Heavy Duty Studio Porcelain Artist Paint Palette sent to me by Meaden, Meaden brand, and it's a 32 well heavy duty pure white porcelain stain resistant palette. palette. Uh, so when Meaden reached out to me and they said, what products would you like to try? I've always known and I've always wanted a big porcelain palette. So I said, can I try this one? And they were so generous to send me one of them to try. So let's open it. And whoa. It is really heavy duty, all right? So this palette is something that you really want to have in your studio. It's not something you want to move around much. And yeah, so let's compare this to my actual palette that I already use in the studio. So as you know, you might be following me for a while. I do use the Shinhan plastic watercolor palette. And what I like about it, it's 42 wells. And you know what? It's actually slightly smaller than this one. And I've also noticed how although I have 42 wells, I don't really use all of them at all. I just use a couple. So there, it is actually a smaller size than, than this one. So it will actually sit quite nicely in the same spot that I always do. Right, so just looking at this gorgeous palette, it is... Um, porcelain as you can tell and I like how deep the wells seem to be and I'm just going to grab my bigger brushes to see how well they work. So I have this bigger filbert and that fits in really nicely. My one inch flat will also go in really nice and it has one large mixing well in the middle for me to do all my mixes and like um, I've shown you before in my existing palette that I use, I don't really have dividers. So I think this one mixing well will be fine for me. So another thing that I got sent was this really cool Paul Rubens Artist Watercolor Tube Set. So I've seen the brand Paul Rubens around on the internet and some other YouTube artists have used their brands before. But um, when they reached out to me, they said that this is the latest one that they have and it's tubes rather than pans. So I'm quite excited to give this a go to just try it out. And since I got this new palette from Meaden and this new 24 color set, I thought why not we just put this color in this new palette and see how it all goes, okay? Ooh, this is a very nice smooth cover. The black is very, very classy. The gold is also very classy. So let's have a look. All right, look at all the different colors. Let's go ahead and start squeezing the paints into the palette. Okay, so now that I have this round palette, it's, um, it's just gonna be so easy. We're just gonna work our way around the color wheel. There we go, I've got all my paints in this very pretty porcelain Meaden um, palette. And I'm just gonna let it dry for a couple of hours and then we're going to come back and do a swatch as well as um, paint something. So we'll come right back. All right, the paint has dried over two days and it's gone pretty solid. And this is when we are going to start uh, swatching the paint. All right, grabbing just any brush you like. I'm using a size 10 round and I'm going into that first color here. It's my Naples yellow. Yep, Naples yellow. And I don't have a yellow like that. I really, really am quite loving how beautiful this is actually showing up. All right, so getting a darker pigment here, you can go quite opaque. 
and then I'm just going to drag some of that color out to see what it looks like when it's transparent Ooh, very pretty 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 and then I'm going to go into the next one which is a lemon yellow so one of your a cooler light yellow oh my gosh I am actually really liking this very beautiful very transparent and very vibrant and bright okay so in watercolor I don't know about you but I love colors that are transparent but vibrant at the same time because a lot of times you get vibrant but colors can be a bit too opaque now we've got a cadmium yellow cadmium yellow at first feels a little bit similar to lemon yellow right pretty similar okay and if I look at the pigment color, pigment number this one says PV PY 35 so this is PY 3 I'm told that this set is mostly single pigmented single pigmented. Well, this one's a mixture obviously it's a PW 6 PY 53 and PBR 24 despite that it's really really beautiful all right, the next one we have here, loving this palette by the way, um, cadmium, sorry, chromium yellow hue deep. So I did not even spray my paints down because I wanted to see how well it re-wets upon just touching. And oh my god, I am loving this color, seriously. Wow, very bright, very, very bright, vibrant and happy. Okay, the next one here, Chromium Orange Hue, PO62. All right, so this one is quite dry, so let me take some time to just scrape it. And I like this as well. So again, a very beautiful transparent orange. It'll be interesting to see how these go against the regular paints that I have as in what's the difference but so far I'm really liking these paints okay chromium red light this is not a sponsored video okay they've gifted me this to review but they didn't pay me to say um, anything positive so all of this review is purely mine and mine alone and Gorgeous. Usually, um, this is very scarlet-y, all right? I would call this a scarlet red, but it says cadmium red light here. And it's PR108. Oh, oh man, oh man, oh man. Okay, I'm just going to touch the colors and see how they react with each other. I think that would be quite fun, but let's just swatch it all out normally first, okay? What's next? What did I have? Okay, Quinn. Rose, Quinacridum Rose PV19. This is the, the pink that I love most and I use a lot of in other brands. And this one feels a little bit darker than the ones I'm used to. By the way, I'm just saying a little bit of paint is really going a long way. It's just so, so pigmented. It's really, really impressive. Okay, this is very fuchsia. Um, and a bit darker, more cooler than the usual PV19 that I'm using. That's, that's fine. Let's go on to the next one, which is Quinn, Quinn Maroon, PV42. Quinn Maroon. As you see, I'm not writing down the numbers here because I just like to just paint and not worry <laughs> so much about writing. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. This is a lovely, Purpley pink, very nice. Quinn maroon. I can I foresee using plenty of these all in my flowers. Okay, it's just crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's keep going around. Which one's this now? Paraline maroon, PR one seven nine. So more of a cooler alizarin crimson type color. I like it. I like it. Reminds me of my mom's lipstick. Yes, gorgeous. Okay, now we are going into purples, all right? So this is Dioxazine Violet, P0. 
PV23. And usually the violets can appear pretty harsh and um, fake looking. But so far this one is seemingly quite lovely. Thins out into a nice transparent, um, lovely mid purple. So I can see this working quite well with mixers. Alright, the next one, translucent turquoise, which I don't use a lot of, but oh wow, oh wow. I have a whole bind turquoise that is very along the line of this turquoise. But I'm finding that this one is really, really bright and vibrant. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay, the next one is Berlin Blue, PB27. And it's also very tealy, you know, that leans on the teal side. And I really kind of like how it's looking. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I can, I can already imagine doing some mixing for the yellow and blue to see what it looks like. What do I have next? Phalo Blue. Phalo Blue. I don't use Phalo Blue a lot. However, I know a lot of artists use Phalo Blue, so I'm not even that familiar with what Phalo Blue is meant to be. Let me know in the description if you understand your blues a lot more. And then we have Indigo, which is a colour I use quite often. It's like your denim jeans, kind of uh, very black, dark, moody blue. I'm happy with that. Not sure why this one is uh, it's foaming up with bubbles more than the others. Um, as I said before, I didn't spray it down on anything. That's why the colours you see here is just me activating with my brush water. And it's doing a great job in in just being activated real quick. French Blue, PB29. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That reminds me of almost like a cobalt blue. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay. Let's move into this light green, which is called May Green. Very, very sweet name, May Green. And it's very, it's like an apple green. Definitely a color I do not own. And I can imagine, you know, me using this to create some very convenient greens to my, my leaves. And the next one here is Oriental Green, which looks to me like a peacock. Um, very cool. Very, very cool green, very jewelly cool green. Not sure why they say this is oriental. Not sure if it's even appropriate to use the word oriental these days, but you know, you have Indian red, Chinese white. So maybe the watercolor or the art world needs to update and get a bit more woke in the naming conventions, hmm? Okay, cobalt. Turquoise Dark. Okay, this is this is so unfamiliar to me. PG26. And not sure if I like this at all. It's quite muddy feeling. Probably will work if you do more muted moody landscapes. I don't see myself reaching for that green, but let's move on. Olive green dark. Now, olive green, I would imagine, this is the last green, by the way. Olive green, I imagine, would be the most leafy green. And yep, I like it. I do, I do, I do. It's very mid sap green, a bit darker than sap green that will work really well with lots of leaves. All right, let's go and do Earth Yellow. Earth Yellow, which is a yellow ochre. Oops, it's, I've 
uh, contaminated it with a bit of my green, that's okay. And I have not had very, very good positive experiences with, with um, yellow ochre. So I think I used a brand in the past that was just so muddy and it just didn't work with any of my colour mixes. But this one looks really nice and I'm wondering if that this will mix well uh, than others. Burnt Sienna. Again, a colour I don't use very much. Okay, it's your terracotta brick colour, which will be very useful if you do buildings, rocks, landscape kind of thing. Not so much florals, I find, but nevertheless useful to just mix into anything that you want to get more earthy with. Venetian Red. I also am not too familiar with this colour, but same kind of like a, a, a redder tint and it looks really nice actually I can I can imagine sort of getting some beautiful brick color pavement color with this all right we're nearly to the end this one is called burn brown umber sorry not burnt umber brown umber and it's very grey. It's almost like a... It's, it's a grey. Brownish grey. Um, which could be a cool shadow colour. Actually, kind of nice. I like it, I like it. It's an earthy black, earthy grey. And then finally, ivory black. And I don't use black that much because I've told that black is colour that can deaden your painting so I've just generally avoided it and already I know what that means like compare this to this like look this black is just black you know it doesn't feel like it's composed of many different colours and shades but it's just so ashy and dull Compared to this one here, which if you look at brown umber, it's a mixture of PB15, PBR7 and PBK9 that gives it this beautiful, almost granulated type of um, finishing. Okay, so there you have it, some the swatch of this Paul Rubin set here. Um, and using this gorgeous Meaden palette, which I'm loving so much. And let's do some mixing. Let's do some mixing on this palette. Okay, so this is me trying to test how this palette is going to be quite fun to mix. So I'm going to grab my lemon yellow. I'm going to try to mix some greens, okay? So I'm going to grab the lemon yellow and maybe this um, turquoise. And I've got a cool green, maybe a bit more turquoise. Ah. And then here we go. And that's actually very similar to this. Let's try something else. Let's do cadmium yellow. I love how it's already mixing on the palette. You see, porcelain palettes, they don't beat up. In instantly, you can get that kind of nice pool. And let's use that French blue. Oh, nice. Very nice. So this is your French blue with cadmium yellow. That's a more natural blue. Uh, green, I mean. There we go. Awesome. Let's try to make some um, purples. I'm gonna try that turquoise again. Love it. I'm just loving how this mixes up. And which one's this? Oh, very nice. This is jackpot. Okay, so I'm just checking which one this this one was. Queen Maroon together with turquoise. And I got like a lovely vibrant purple. And if I want to tilt it more to the reddish side. Just add more of this one, of the red. Awesome. 
let's let's mix a nice coral okay so a coral would be uh, this one PV19 with an orange maybe the gamboshi one here mm -hmm. okay it's coming up more like a an orange um, lemon yellow let's see how that fixes out yeah it's a very very fun bright orange and let's see what happens if I mix that yellow ochre rish with this maroon here Ooh. It's a very lovely dusty pink. Dusty pink, maybe a bit more yellow ochre. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's try this May green together with a bit of the indigo. Ooh. So I guess for the May green, it's a light green. Adding it with blue, you get a darker green. Kind of cool, kind of cool. All right, so this is what I have done. Swatch this lovely uh, Paul Rubens Artist Watercolor 24 color set. And I will proceed now to paint uh, some, some flowers with it. All right, so to paint a very simple, loose floral, I'm going to be using this Meaden watercolor paper, 100% cotton, which is the same brand as this palette. And uh, you can see all of these products in the description below if you're interested. Otherwise, let's begin. So I think I am going to first wipe off all the colors that you see on my palette so we can start afresh. I'm gonna start with my deep orange to start with a nice little dahlia flower here. Dapping into my cadmium yellow. And then brushing off all the water to just get, I mean, all the pigment to just get plain water to just pull a bit of that pigment out. And now I'm gonna just use this PV19 to create this rose. Okay, so I'm really, really kind of liking how vibrant and transparent it is. I, I, I don't know how to describe how vibrancy and transparency can co-mingle, all right? So a lot of times in the past, I've used other brands that are very transparent, but just weak. And then it's almost like I need to go and power up power up the opacity to get it to be more vibrant. And I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do. So I'm just going to mix a bit of blue with this purple so that it's not too purpley for this bloom down here. Okay, and then now I'm just going to add one of the first greens, this olive green, using my olive green. Mm. A bit of that May green. And then I'm going to go and get some of this red to create this other bloom that's sticking out here. And I realize this doesn't have the color which I often use, which is opera. But 
it's fine. I'm gonna try to make up something pink for these tiny blooms down here. So I might mix a bit of yellow to get a peachy, peachy pink. Hmm, seriously quite impressed so far by this palette. I mean, apart from not having some colours which I like, like Opera Pink, which maybe they sell in tubes, I don't know. But I'm, like, I'm liking how reliable and consistent this is all looking. Okay, I'm going to try to mix a, 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 a green which I'm more comfortable with and maybe I need to get some of this um, earthy, earthy tones into this green. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just going to pull out some stems here. So this is like a handheld bouquet. So we just need some long stems. Oops, I kind of dipped into that grey. I'm not sure if I should have done that. Never mind. This one here, giving a bit my stem colour. And we have this. And it's very, very light. Let's get a really light lilac y to indicate some of the filler flowers we have on this side. When we're trying something new, it's always a bit tricky, isn't it, to try something because we're just used to reliability. When you get used to reliability of doing something and getting a, spe a specific result every single time, you count on that. It's like you, you, you need that consistency and that assurance that it's going to be whatever it's going to be and I'm, I'm, I'm just noticing the discomfort in using different greens and different blues. I'm trying to breathe through it all and not rush it but you know um, sometimes I do like to paint quick and I do get a sense of satisfaction and a rush from the pace so sometimes the results might not be what I like but I just know that I had a great time painting that and it's totally fine okay so uh, I'm gonna do up some leaves because just uses May leaf and maybe just tint a tiny bit of yellow ochre in there there we go. Create some of that. Oh, I like that. That's really nice. Okay, yellow ochre and that may green is giving me a real nice yellowy green. Um, now I'm going to just put just maybe an extra layer of darkness in the middle of this dahlia and I'm gonna lift up see how the lifting is for some of this pigment quite cool quite cool this is good lift and then I'm going to just also this palette is obviously not the palette I'm used to and it's all the colors are in different spots so noticing the discomfort in that area too. Okay, I really want a dark green now. So I'm getting my dark sazine purple and mixing this olive green with it to see if I can get a dark green. I usually use sap green. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. Still a bit cool. I need to warm it up a bit. And I usually have brown umber, but I don't, so I'm going to use this. I can't remember which one this is. Burnt Sienna. 
Yes, so a very cool dark green here. Very mud, slightly muddy in a good way, dark green. So I'm going to place a couple of dark greens all around in there. And then I think that's it. That's going to be, that's where I'm going to stop today. A very simple, easy, loose floral using this wonderful Paul Rubin set. I'll definitely be using this more and more, trying out different colors and how it all works and how it all uh, mixes together. But there you have it, a simple loose floral. There we have it, just a very simple loose floral using some of the wonderful products that was gifted to me. And if you're interested in any of them, there are links in the description below, just go and check it out. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.